OK, thank you. Uh, so I represent the National Library of Norway and the Norwegian Language Bank. Um, but what I'm going to present here is a part of the Language Bank, which is our DH lab, uh, because we have done uh, lots of activity on digital humanities in the last 10 years. And I'm, I want to present the result of that uh, here. So my colleagues, uh, Lars and Andrea, are not here today, but uh, I represent the, the team. So um, I'm going to present the corpus infrastructure that we have at the National Library of Norway. And it wouldn't exist without the digitization project that we have. So I have a brief uh, introduction to that is, uh, is in order. Um, the National Library of Norway uh, decided in 2006 to digitize uh, the complete collections that we have, which is a pretty ambitious uh, project, obviously. Uh, we don't have <laughs> that many books in Norway as, for example, in bigger countries like Germany, but still there are 700,000 books and we have digitized them all, so that's um, pretty nice. Uh, and um, it makes, uh, so this digitization project has led to one of the largest corpora uh, in the world. We have, uh, as of now, 160 billion tokens for uh, languages spoken in Norway, so Norwegian, uh, Bukmol and Nynorsk, uh, Sami languages, Kven, uh, and obviously lots of English in modern times, and historically German, French, Latin, and so on. Danish, not to, not to forget Danish. <laughs> and Swedish. <laughs> uh, and being a library, we also have uh, bibliographical metadata for more or less, at least, each document, which is very nice when building corpora. So that's the, uh, the background. Um, and then we have, as some of you may know, we have uh, the so-called Bukula agreement in Norway, which is pretty unique in the sense that it is a collective licensing agreement. So the licensor, the, the digital rights organ organizations have made an agreement on behalf of all publishers, authors in Norway with the National Library. And, and they grant us the right to publish uh, books up until the year 2001. Um, we can make them available in our uh, internet library, digital library, uh, for users with Norwegian IP addresses. Uh, and the, the, the agreement was recently, or it was renewed actually on last Friday. So now we cover up to 2006. So you can get access to books uh, for up to 2006 in our digital solution. And this is, um, a screenshot of our uh, digital library, which is a IIIF based uh, viewer. And obviously that's very nice. Uh, it's a very, uh, it's, it's a nice way to search the complete, uh, more or less written digital heritage of, uh, of Norway. But we also wanted to make uh, quantitative uh, analysis uh, available to researchers. And uh, we started in 2014 by creating uh, NB Ngram, which is very, very much inspired by uh, the Google uh, Books Ngram viewer, which most of you probably know. Um, so in order to create that service, um, we extracted Ngrams, Unigrams, Bigrams, and Trigrams from all digitized books and newspapers, um, aggregated them um, with uh, 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 metadata, bibliographical net metadata from the library, and made it available as a as a service. And this service has been updated uh, in recent years with, uh, as the uh, digitization project has progressed. And uh, we now have uh, data from up to 2022 in the, in the service. And the data can also be, or the, the Ngram uh, sets, data sets can also be downloaded in our uh, language bank uh, repository, Clarion repository. And this is obviously, this service is obviously a good starting point for corpus exploration, but we soon noticed that researchers want more than this. And therefore, uh, so this is an example, uh, the introduction of the letter O in Norwegian, so you can see it pretty nicely here in 1917 <laughs> goes up, in, here ex exemplified by a preposition, so it's a stop word. Um, okay, so researchers wanted more than this, and therefore we founded the DH Lab at the National Library in 2017. Uh, and 
what we did was that we created a REST API uh, and a Python package for interacting with, it, with this API uh, on library collections. We also have a uh, we also uh, have developed web apps for consuming this API. I'm going to present this uh, soon. Uh, we have a, a support service, a lib answers uh, uh, kind of service uh, where users can ask questions. Uh, and it is then we get a task uh, or, or message queue uh, to the team so that we can uh, answer, uh, the relevant person can answer. We, as a national library, um, became a research institution in 2015, so pretty recently. Uh, but since then, we have started to participate in, uh, in, in many different research projects. So we, as the Edge Lab, are uh, currently participating in 10, more, more than 10 externally financed research projects with our uh, platform and team. And we also do workshops for students and researchers. So our fields of expertise are obviously uh, text analysis. We have done, uh, but we have as a national library also done lots of work on OCR, for example. Uh, the first, in the first years of the digitization project, uh, the OCR wasn't very good, <laughs> unfortunately. So we have to, uh, for example, for the 19th century, it was barely usable at all. <laughs> so we did, a, uh, we have done some uh, model work and re-OCR. And this is obviously something that should be done uh, every now and then. Uh, in recent years, we've also been involved in uh, handwritten text rec recognition. So we have uh, developed a model for uh, Norwegian 19th century letters. And uh, we're currently uh, into speech recognition at the Language Bank using fine-tuned whisper models. And we also have a current project on making web data from the Norwegian Web Archive uh, available. So we're also in involved in, for example, in text extraction from, from web data, boilerplate removal, uh, and so on and so forth. Okay, so I'll skip that. Um, we have a corpus, a, a fairly large corpus of 160 billion tokens for Norwegian. Uh, it breaks up into, we have 600,000 600, books available uh, for uh, concordancing, collocation analysis and so forth. Uh, we have lots of newspapers. It's not quite finished yet. Uh, I mean, obviously there are also newspapers coming in every day. Uh, and we're currently digitizing the journals. So the infrastructure as of today uh, consist, consists of, of these um, material types. We have, uh, I'm going to talk about that soon, uh, we have uh, chosen SQLite as a database solution, full text index. Uh, we provide a REST API um, and we provide Python, package, uh, Python and R packages and web apps. And the whole infrastructure uh, is built around the FAIR principles. That's very important. For full text search, uh, we decided um, in 2017 to uh, go for SQLite, uh, and um, it's a very, it's a very simple but very performant solution. It's also very actively developed, uh, so that's very nice. We benefit from the work uh, that's done in the community. Um, we have separate, so obviously we have not only one large uh, SQLite database file. We have many, so we partition. Uh, uh, the database, we have chunks of 20,000, say, books uh, in the database, and then we have some logic uh, around it, developed in, 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 in Python, uh, parallelizing over across these databases, databases. And it's obviously then simple to add new sets of text when we get some without having to build all, rebuild all the indexes. We are currently looking at, uh, because it's, it's, it's simple, but it's as the corpus gets bigger, it's obviously also uh, um, some um, administrative uh, hurdles <laughs> maintaining it. So we are looking into, for example, Elasticsearch or or Solar Cloud actually for for future uh, for the future. But this has worked uh, very well so far, and we simply we work with tables like this. I mean, with one word per uh, per row, uh, we have a a persistent identifier for the text, uh, and then we uh, create virtual tables, full text tables, using uh, using these tables as a starting point. Obviously, very important 
all, each digitized object in our collections has a URN from the National Library. And each textual object that, that's being offered in the DH Lab has its own unique uh, identifier. So once, when we do re-OCR, for example, we get a new textual persistent identifier. Uh, we, we, we weren't that good at, uh, <laughs> with persistent identifiers uh, back in the day, and that was very unfortunate. Uh, so we have uh, learned. <laughs> Yes, that's very, persistent identifiers are extremely important. Um, okay, so just a um, few examples of our, uh, of the way the user, um, typically, typically we work with this infrastructure. This is our REST API for the developers. This is Swagger interface. Uh, we then have the DHLab Python package, pip install DHLab simply. We have uh, not fully featured, but most core features uh, are also implemented in this uh, R package, which is mostly used by our from uh, colleagues from from the social sciences. They they want to work, often work, want to work with R. And then we have web apps on our uh, landing page, dh.nb.no. Dh and for the most for, for most web apps, we use Python Streamlit as a uh, framework. I don't know if uh, if you have worked with it. It's very very nice, simple to work with. Build, developing new uh, applications is very very simple with Streamlit. Frighteningly simple, um, and we de deploy that on a uh, on a uh, Kubernetes cluster in Google Cloud. So outside of the national library, the API itself and the data are stored in Norway on servers in northern Norway, but services built around uh, or outside the API are on international uh, uh, computer centers. So what do we offer? I'm just to have to look at the time. Okay, we're doing all right. <laughs> yeah. Um, so what do we offer in the DH Lab? We, do, we offer um, a corpus builder, so you can build corpora from the collections, um, and you can build fairly large uh, corpora if you want. We do uh, um, frequency lists of bigrams and uh, unigrams from, from a given URL or, or, or a set of URNs or a corpus. We do on the fly server side tagging of text using Spacey. So um, we haven't done automatic annotation of the complete corpus. That's uh, lots of work, obviously. But we do on the fly, and uh, if a given text has been annotated, then we obviously cache that text so it's available for further, uh, for later use without having to do the, the annotation pipeline. We do uh, conc uh, concordancing, obviously, uh, and we also did a little co-occurrence statistics, for example. So for concordances, we offer small portions of uh, of textual data and the concordance window is limited at API levels. You can, as at present, you get access to 12 words before and 12 words after the keyword. And importantly, the concordances are not allowed to span paragraphs. So it's to make it at least more difficult to reconstruct the complete text. That's something that we want to, uh, not, not, not our users to do, definitely. Um, and the concordance output is also linked to the digital, digital library at the National Library, so, so that you can, you can get the actual, uh, you can have a look at the actual page if you have access to that, uh, that particular book, that is. We also d deliver frequency statistics, for example, for unigrams and bigrams, number of co-occurrences co uh, of a word or a phrase with other words, and obviously also the total number of tokens in a particular text or, to or corpus so that you can use your preferred method of collocation analysis. The, the API uh, should deliver the building blocks for such an analysis. Let's just show you an example of such a Streamlit, uh, Streamlit app. So this is our, this is our collocations app. Uh, and here in the, it's obviously Norwegian, uh, but um, I, I get you, <laughs> I bet you, you, uh, it should be fairly familiar. So you can build a, a corpus. Uh, here I'm looking at racism as an example in Norwegian. And I've built a corpus uh, in the, of books, 5,000 books from the 1970s. You can just then get a random sample of books from the 1970s containing the word racism. 
and then search for the node word racism, and then the system will give you co-occurrence counts for that particular uh, word. And here we use a, a variant of point-wise mutual information, but you could, as I said, you can obviously uh, use your preferred scoring um, uh, method, log likelihood or, 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 or whatever. Um, and so th this app makes it very simple for, for example, users, our users in uh, political science or literature studies who are perhaps not so proficient in programming to easily uh, get uh, statistics from texts. And here we can see in the 1970s in Norwegian, racism is more connected with structural, structural racism connected to ideologies, uh, whereas if you do the same in a corpus from, uh, from, the, from our present day, we get more kind of xenophobia, uh, individual uh, racism, so to speak. It's pretty simple to, to do these analysis using our uh, API. You also get concordances um, in, a, in a separate app. So we decided to separating the functionalities, creating smaller, smaller apps for the various uh, features. Um, but it's all, all these apps are using the same REST API. And then we have, for example, also um, more also n-gram, n-grams for newspapers on day level. So here is an example of COVID, uh, Corona. <laughs> uh, not so surprising, uh, and it's going down. Yeah. So that was it. Thanks for your attention. Thank you. Um, do these data uh, also become available via Clarin in some way, or is that completely? That's a good. That's a good question. Uh, we make uh, so the data, um, the, the the infrastructure is a resource in our uh, resource catalog. Uh, so it's made available. Uh, it's easily available through our C center. We are a Clarin C center. We also um, provide data sets created on the infrastructure. For example, these these n-grams data sets are fairly uh, often used in, in in Norwegian contexts. Uh, so we do provide the infrastructure itself and derived data sets within Clarin, yes. Thank you, hope this answers the question. And yes, we have another question. This is amazing amount of data you, you have collected. <laughs> it's uh, just amazing. <laughs> With all this data, <clears throat> do you collaborate in uh, creating large language models for Norwegian? Sorry, I, I didn't get the, the collaborate in creating large language models? Large language models, uh, yes, we do. Uh, we have, um, at the National Library, we have uh, an AI lab, which has created uh, various BERT and GPT models for Norwegian, but obviously using materials that, I mean, we have lots of material uh, digitized and using material that's, well, uh, open for uh, lots of non-copyright materials. For example, governmental reports, uh, books that are public domain, newspapers we, we have agreements with, uh, and so on. Uh, we have la large language models based on, on such data, yes. Thank you. So, Any more questions? Don't see the raised hands. Oh, yes, yes, please. <laughs> Thanks for the amazing work. I think there's a lot of jealous people in the audience today. <laughs> um, I have a question uh, with your approach to deal um, with a lot of pre-processing and annotation steps in-house. Uh, I think you um, do a great service for the DH and uh, social science researchers, but at the same time, it's a very closed system. So they probably also um, need or want transparency and quality assurance. Is this something that you get asked about in terms of, you know, doing critical, responsible science? And uh, do you document this? Do you control for this? These are very good questions. We do, uh, for example, in terms, of, uh, in terms of OCR, we had the problem that it was basically unusable for the uh, 19th century. Uh, so we responded to that by uh, creating uh, creating models for the 19th century, evaluated them, uh, and the, the models are also published. Uh, and we also intend to publish the complete data sets for the 19th century because that's ob obviously public domain. So it's, um, yeah. But obviously for mo data, copyright data, it's more 
definitely more difficult. But we could do this, and we should do this with the with the open data. And uh, some some documentation is there, but it, we could definitely do better. Yes, I agree. <laughs>